Last night, the men hosted the Patriots of George Mason University. A win would put the Monarchs on top of the conference. On Wednesday, the Lady Monarchs got in the win column. And Reuben Carrington has more. Big time conference rivalry and a share for first place on the line. The Old Dominion Monarchs hosted the George Mason Patriots on Thursday night. And the Patriots are looking for their first win in the TED since February of 2004. George Mason looking good right from the start. Sherrod Wright says, don't mind if I do, gets the steal and throws it down backyard style. Mason back on offense as Vaughn finds Allen and Allen finds Morrison who says, look out below with the big time jam. George Mason will build a 10 point lead. But the Monarchs would come roaring back. Delancey finds Bazemore wide open for the triple in the corner. Next time on offense, Bazemore says, let me return the favor. This time, Delancey wide open in the corner. Big time three-point shot for the Monarchs. Now it's the defense's turn as Bazemore comes up with the steal. He finds Delancey. Delancey gives it back and says, finish strong, young man, finish strong. Patriots led at the half, 34-31. But the Monarchs were never able to quite close the gap. Second half, Vaughn slashing down the middle for the tough basket. And the sophomore Byron Allen says it is a Reynolds wrap. Sick layup right down the heart of the Monarch defense. George Mason would win 63 to 54. After the game, we caught up with Blaine Taylor to get his thoughts on his team's performance. You know, it, it, it's about half befuddling to me. Uh, to have 22 offensive rebounds and have two points to show for it. I don't think they've made as many plays as you might think. You know, shooting 38% at one for seven, you know, it's not like they went lights out the second half. You know, they just, uh, they, you know, their lights just weren't quite as dim as ours. The Lady Monarchs hosted the Georgia State Panthers on Wednesday night, and Tia Lewis would dominate this game and put the team on her back. Here she is with the rebound and gets the finish for the Lady Monarchs. The Tia Lewis show would not stop as she gets another easy basket down low. Lewis would finish with 30 points on the night. And the Lady Monarchs were looking to seal the deal. Lewis says 30 is enough. Let's share the wealth. She finds Cook for the finish. Lady Monarchs would roll past the Panthers 68 to 59. Thursday night, prime time in a national television stage as the Hampton Pirates hosted the Florida A&M Rattlers. And the Pirates were looking to make a statement early on in conference play. Early first quarter action, third and short for the Rattlers, and Lindell Gibson says not so fast. Rattlers would be forced to punt. The Pirates would waste no time. David Legree on the ensuing drive. Let's one fly downfield and connect with Reginald Hicks. Pirates would take the early lead 7-0. The Pirates looking to keep things rolling here. Legree finds Mr. Reliable Diary McCain, and 48 yards later, he's deep into Florida A&M territory. And on the very next play, they would catch the Rattler sleeping as Legree finds P.J. Hicks once again. Virtually untouched, Pirates would lead at the half 17 to nothing. At the start of the second half, the Rattler's trying to get things going here. Austin Trainer's going to keep it for himself, but he is met by Delbert Tyler with the big time hit. And that would not be the last time you would see that trainer again. Nothing downfield is going to keep it, and Delbert Tyler says, hey, can't remember me. Another big time blow, the ball is loose. Hampton appears to have recovered it, but the ball is still loose. Hampton would recover. Rattlers would make one last attempt at it and Trainer's gonna let it go downfield, but it's gonna be picked off by James Butts. Hampton would roll 23 to 17. In NCAA basketball, rivalry week continued here in Hampton Roads. Starting off, we head to the TED to catch the action from the ODU Monarchs and the VCU Rams. Big Blue is pumped up for the biggest rivalry in the CAA. ODU taking on VCU at the TED this afternoon. Picking up action in the second half as ODU was held to one point in the first nine minutes and 30 seconds, but Kent Bazemore sparks the rally with the steal and the tough bucket in traffic and the foul, and he would convert on the free throw. VCU back on offense. Burgess would lose the ball. Kent Bazemore comes up with it again, brings the ball up court and says, young man, this is what you do with it. Step back, three-pointer, drains the tray. ODU would lead by three. And with just under a minute to play, Theus loses the ball, gets it back, and finds Bradford Burgess again. Big time three-point shot in the corner. That would tie it all up at 61 apiece. Very next possession for the Monarchs. VCU applying pressure, and Javante Riddick comes up with the steal. Darius Theus comes up with it, playing in front of the hometown crowd, says, Mama, I made it. Gets the bucket and the foul. 
VCU would lead by three. One last chance for the Monarchs. Kent Bazemore is going to take the desperation shot, but it's no good. The Monarchs fall 64 to 68. And this is where we find new Channel 3's photographer Reuben Carrington with tonight's basketball roundup. The undefeated Salem Sun Devils were looking to show everyone why they are unbeaten. And boy, did they do so tonight as they dominated Bayside. Early action here, Salem coming up with the stingy defense that Ariana Davis with the steal and finds Jada Carrillo who gets the easy finish out in transition. The trend would continue more stingy defense from Salem, and that's Aaliyah Floyd this time coming up with the steal and Nakia Burris finishing with the layup. Salem would keep pouring it on as Brianna Daniels finds Shanice Boyd down in the post. Salem punishes Bayside 71-33. Next stop, Tallwood, where the Lions hosted the Kellum Knights. Kellum getting things going here early, and that's Chris Garner with the 20-foot jumper, knocking it down. Tallwood back on offense with some sloppy play because Ifeni Akanawa is going to come up with the loose ball and the pretty finish up in transition for Kellum. The Lions would fight and keep it close as Darius Thornton is going to connect on the 15-foot jumper from the corner. But in the end, Kellum will put things away. Ramon Snowden, whoops, with the no-look pass, finds Nick Edwards. Kellum would roll 53-57. to And in the game of the night, the Granby Comets hosted the Northam Greyhounds. Welcome looking good here. Devin Patterson on the move, and he comes with the up and under lane, making it look oh so easy. The Comets would build a strong lead here as Lucas Kajuda with the fake, causing three Greyhounds to bite. Connects on the easy lane, and to make matters worse, Aaron Johnston way downtown with the big three-pointer. That would make it a 13-point lead. But in the fourth quarter, the Greyhounds would come racing back. James Whitaker comes up with the ball and the strong finish, pulling the Greyhounds within five. Clock ticking on the Greyhounds, but Devin Patterson finds Mark Mangia for the quick finish. And with just under 30 seconds to play, Devin Patterson trying to make things happen. Can't quite get the finish there. Comets would hang on to win the ball game. 63 to 57.